So we've established that terpenes are responsible for the, the wide variety of flavors and aromas that cannabis can take on. And this isn't new to us, and we've been describing these effects for a long time. So how have we been doing that? Well, we've been doing that with the indica and sativa nomenclature. Indicas are plants that come from northern India, Afghanistan, the Hindu Kush mountain ranges. They're usually short, squatty, very densely foliated, um, big flowers, and in general tend to have a sedative effect. Whereas sativa plants tend to come from equatorial regions, they're very tall, they're sparsely foliated, produce you know, smaller flowers, but they tend to have an energizing and, and, and sort of um, stimulating effect, which is very different from the indica plants. And, and, and the flavors are very different between, different between the two, two types of cannabis. So what's happening here and what's causing that? Well, you might have guessed, it's terpenes. Um, the, the indica plants oftentimes have a lot of myrcene and very little of the other cannabinoids, or terpenes, excuse me. And myrcene is a known sedative. It has a sedative effect. So when you combine THC with myrcene, you're going to get sleepy. Whereas the sativa plants tend to have less myrcene, or sometimes very little to no myrcene at all, and they'll have other terpenes like terpinaline or pinene. Um, and these terpenes are, are known to be stimulating or to, be, to, to, to have sort of uh, uplifting effects. And so, and, Couple that with the lack of mercine, and you have plants that aren't going to make you sleepy. They might even actually make you feel a little racy. So, you know, how do we kind of sort of marry up the, the indica sativa in, in, in the terpene classification? Well, by, by assigning or by, by sort of overlaying the strains that we typically find or typically label as sativa with the, with the terpenes that are common for sativas and the strains that we typically label as indica for the terpenes that are common on indicas. And, and what we find is, is, is they match up very well. Um, and, and then somewhere in between, you have the hybrids. You have, and, and, and most of the strains you're going to find on the market today are going to be some type of hybrid. And so um, what we have today on, in, in kind of the modern cannabis market is, is you can find strains that, that have kind of everything from very, very high myrcene, no terpinaline, no pinene, um, N n very little other terpenes to, to, to strains that have, you know, kind of equal amounts of three or more terpenes. Um, and so what we've done at the lab and, 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 what, and what many other groups have tried to do is sort of put together a classification system to, to, to better describe the, the ratios of terpenes within a cannabis strain um, and, and, and sort of drill down and get a little bit more granular than you can with just indica sativa and hybrid. So, we're going to sort of get into a, a basic classification of terpenes, and, and, and then from there we'll, we'll um, sort of wrap it all up with, with kind of strains that you might find in, in, with those different, different classifications. So what you're looking at right now on, on this slide is, is basically the commonality that we find at our lab um, of the different dominant terpenes in a strain. So as you can see, myrcene is by far the most commonly dominant terpene in cannabis. Now there's some cannabis strains that have almost no or no myrcene at all, but in general, most cannabis is going to be dominant in myrcene. Then you also have beta caryophylline and lemonine that are very, very common terpenes. Um, you have terpinaline and pinene that sort of make up your, your sativas, and as you can see are much less common in, in the California market at least. And then you have a very small sliver of others and, and sort of outliers. And, and those are some of, the, some of the strains that I find the most interesting. We're, we're going to try and, try and put some sort of system to all of this. And, and if you think of it sort of like wine, you have red wines, you have white wines, but then you also have many different sort of varietals of wine in between there. And you have, you know, within reds, you have cabs, you have merlots, you have pinots. And in each one of those, if, if you know your wine, are very different. Um, but they all classify together, or they all sort of group together as reds, whereas and then all the whites sort of group together. And so that's, that's how we've sort of described terpenes, and that's how many other groups are, are, are doing it as well. So what does this mean? Let's, let's kind of go through each of the major classes of terpenes, and then in, in sort of describe kind of what strains we f commonly find within those classes. So the first most common class is the myrcene dominant strains. Um, the, and, and the first of those is, is totally myrcene dominant, very little else. And those are your fruity strains. So your, your blueberry, your cherry AK, 
things like that, tangy, are going to be mercine dominant, have a lot of mercine and just small amounts of other terpenes. And then you also have mercine dominant strains with a little bit of lemonine um, and beta caryophylline. Um, those are going to be your, your, your kind of your gas strains, your, your, really, sedative, your really sedative OGs, your, 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 your really sedative sour diesels, things like that. Um, and then you have your mercine dominant with beta caryophylline secondary strains, and just a little bit of beta caryophylline. Those are your purples, your granddaddy perp, your purple urkels, things like that. And then finally, you're going to have mercine dominant strains that have osamine as the secondary terpene. And those are your, your, your tropical strains, much, much rarer and, and, and much more exotic. All right, so what you're looking at here is a prototypical mercine dominant profile. Um, this, is, this is sort of the average of all mercine dominant profiles, um, it, um, terpene concentrations. So as you can see, a lot of mercine, and then you know, fair amounts of lemonine, beta caryophylline, osamine, things like that, but, but mercine is gonna be your, your, your dominant terpene. And the next class, the, the kind of the second most abundant class behind just straight mercine dominant is, is sort of a co-dominant class. So it, it's the only major class where, where you're going to always see one of these three or uh, the three of these terpenes sort of in, 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 in semi-equal amounts. You're going to have one or the other that's probably dominant and that's what's going to kind of um, sort of differentiate between the subgroups in this class or, 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 or the kind of major, um, you know, kind of major prototypical subclasses, um, but, but this is a co-dominant class. So you're going to see made, mercine, beta caryophylline, and lemonine in, in almost equal amounts. And, and, and when, you, when you see just, you know, sort of mercine first, beta caryophylline, and lemonine secondary, but still mostly equal amounts, those are your gelatos, your, your Sunday drivers, your wedding cakes, things of that nature. Um, and then you also have the class where beta caryophylline is, is dominant and, and mercine and lemonine are sort of secondary. And that's your sherbet, your cookies, things of that nature. And then thirdly, you're going to have lemonine dominant with less beta caryophylline and mercine. But again, we're still, you know, nearly equal concentrations. And those are your berry whites, your banana OGs, your other OGs that are not so sedative, your, 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 your less heavy OGs, your sort of lemony OGs like Tahoe OG. Um, and that, that's what you're going to find in, 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 that, in that third subclass of the mercine, beta caryophylline, lemonine, codominant class. And in what you're looking at here, again, is another sort of um, prototypical average um, terpene profile from, from a strain that, that would fall within that class. Now, the third class I'm going to talk about is, is the rarest class. These, these strains make up probably around 7% or so of all the samples we see come through our lab. So, so much less common than the other two classes I just talked about. And that's the pinene dominant class. Um, you, you're either going to see pinene, pinene dominant strains um, with you know, almost equal amounts of pinene or mercine, where well, one or the other might be in slightly larger amounts, but, but, um, but more or less pretty much equal. And, and again, super rare, but um, Blue Dream is also is, is, is a, a very common strain that you will find within this class. But there's very few other strains that we, we find that have this, this profile. So even though Blue Dream kind of gets a bad rap as being one of those commercial strains that you find everywhere, it's actually one of the most unique strains out there that, that's commonly available. Um, the other kind of subgroup that we see of, of, of pinene dominant strains are just pinene dominant, very little of everything else. Maybe a little bit of awesome, maybe a little bit of little, little, but almost, almost just completely pinene dominant. And these strains are very, very rare, less than a tenth of a percent of the strains we test in the lab. Um, and, 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 and some of the strains are, are named things like fruit strip, taffy, sour caramello, royal pineapple, um, you know, kind of obscure strains that you, you may or may not have heard of. Um, but those are, are, are strictly pinene dominant strains. And, and, and here is, a, is, is another kind of prototypical profile for, for pinene dominant strains. The last group, there's, there's four of them, of, of, of major groups of, of, of cannabis that, that we see in the lab. This, this comprises maybe 10 to 12% of the samples we see through the lab is, are the terpenaline dominant strains. And, and, and again, like I said earlier, these, these tend to be the, the, the prototypical sativa strains. They're, gonna, they're not gonna make you sleepy. They're gonna be very uplifting and, and, and sort of, um, oftentimes you see them as, as, as described as, as creative strains or, or inspired strains because you know, these are the daytime strains, the, the ones that are, are, are gonna, you're gonna do well when you got stuff to do. Um, so um, the first is just terpenaline dominant. Like we've had with each of these strains where you've got a lot of terpene, terpenaline and very little of anything else. 
Um, that's your Durbin poison. So 